Hi friends, it's Miss Rachel from the William Jeans Library and it is April, which is Poetry Month. I have some more poems to read to you today. Um, today we're going to read some silly ones from a book called Don't Forget Your Etiquette, The Essential Guide to Misbehavior. This is written by David Greenberg and it's illustrated by Nadine Bernard Escott. And I'm going to read some poems from this book to you with permission from the publisher, um, who is Farrar, Strauss, and Giroux. And there are lots of funny poems in this book. I only have three of them chosen to read for you today. But feel free to check it out once the library reopens so you can read all of them. The first poem um, I feel like is important to read to you because it introduces the book. It's called Miss Information Speaks Her Mind. I'm going to show you a picture of Miss Information. Can you see her there? And you can see some other pictures from some of the silliness in this book. Most adults were never kids. It's scientifically true. So they cannot appreciate a child's point of view. Most adults were never kids, as everybody knows. But you will find exceptions, and I am one of those. And now that I am fully grown with countless PhDs, it seems to me the time is ripe to share my expertise. From how you sip your soup, to how you kiss goodnight, to how you sneeze or give a belch, there's wrong and then there's right. Children who know etiquette are children who've got class. Children who don't know it, you can always spot, alas. But the etiquette of olden days takes endless, boring study. Children need an etiquette far less fuddy-duddy. So if you're smart, you'll read my book of modern children's etiquette. If you don't, I'm sad to say, your life will be Pathetic it. So, let's find out the proper etiquette according to misinformation. First, we are going to read etiquette with food. And there is a quote at the top of this page that says, A person who doesn't know how to eat his food commits an unkind act against the people who have to share the table with him. And this is from Letitia Baldridge's More Than Manners, Raising Today's Kids to Have Kind Manners and Good Hearts. Let's find out what misinformation has to say about etiquette with food. I'm gonna show you the pictures afterwards. When drinking from a gravy boat, hold it by the lip and delicately sip from it, careful not to drip. Meatballs and spaghetti, no need to get up tight. Eat meatballs with your left hand, spaghetti with your right. What do you think of that? Does that look like good manners? Let's find out about the next page, what's happening with food etiquette on this page. A turkey's very messy, and it's bad to be a slob. So I recommend you eat the thing like corn right off the cob. Excess salad dressing? Don't take a leaf and flick it. No, lift it like a flower and very gently lick it. Olives by the fistful simply isn't done. You must place them on your fingertips and eat them one by one. Let's see what Miss Etiquette is talking about here. See the olives on the fingers? And eating turkey like corn on the cob? Or eating salad leaf by leaf with your fingers? Hmm. But how to eat a bony fish? Do not be afraid. Just drop it in the blender and eat the thing pureed. And finally, cake of any sort requires careful slicing. However, it's important first to lick off all the icing. 
What do you think of that? What do you think your parents would think of you eating with this kind of etiquette or these kind of manners? Do you think this information knows what she's talking about? I wonder. Next, we are going to read. Get to the right page. Here it is. The etiquette of going to sleep. At the top of this poem, there's a quote from Emily Post's Teen Etiquette. You'd probably love to have more sleep, but your activities keep getting in the way. Getting up early for school, homework, watching TV, chores and errands, the list of excuses to stay awake is endless. Make a healthy choice to make time for sleep. That's what Emily Post says. Let's find out what misinformation says. What parents don't appreciate, and never ever will, is that sleep is bad for children. Sleep makes children ill. Sleep will make you grumpy. Sleep will give you zits. Sleep will make you jumpy. Give you hissy fits. So after you're tucked in and they've begun to snore, slither out of bed, scamper out the door. Watch television reruns, enjoy the solitude, then call an all-night restaurant to order Chinese food. Have your buddies over, and when everyone has dined, bake cookies for dessert and leave the mess behind. Skateboard through the house or pogo stick instead, then send your buddies home and sneak back into bed. Your mom and dad will wake you with a gentle loving tap, and then it's off to school, young man. Just the place to nap. That looks like a lot of fun. I'm not sure if it is the right thing to do to stay up all night and make messes and then sleep through school. Probably not, but it sure looks like fun, doesn't it? All right, we're going to read one more. This one is called The Etiquette of Kissing. We're going to read from How Rude, The Teenager's Guide to Good Manners, Proper Behavior, and Not Grossing People Out. It's important to master the intricacies of social kissing. I don't know what that means, but... We'll find out what misinformation says about kissing. With emperors and empresses, you only kiss their cheeks. With giant thrashing octopi, you only kiss their beaks. At diplomatic parties, you just kiss the fingertips. Mwah! With fierce Komodo dragons, you only kiss their lips. Principals and teachers require slurpy smooches, kind of like the type you get from friendly pooches. Girl-to-boy kisses, ah, life's unpleasant duties, aren't going to kill you, though you'll probably get cooties. And if your parents kiss you in front of friends, I say, a child with good etiquette will disown them right away. Now, some of these I know are not true. You should always let your parents kiss you. And you should probably not try to kiss a fierce Komodo dragon. But I do love the picture of the Komodo dragon with lipstick on, ready for a big slurpy kiss. Thank you for joining me for some silly and not very true poetry, but it was fun to read and it was fun rhyming and fun illustrations and fun imagination. I hope you are reading. I hope you are writing. Maybe you're writing some poetry and I hope you are enjoying April and Poetry Month.
and I will see you again soon.